Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, we're going to use Elasticsearch's snapshot and restore feature to not restore to a file system that's local to the server, but actually take advantage of AWS's S3 buckets. So stick around and we'll go ahead and jump into it. But first, time for my shameless plug. If you wanna learn more about our company, head on over to opensecure.co. If you would like to hire us for a project, select the Hire Us button at the top of this video. To see firsthand the power of open source technology, take advantage of our interactive demo. Select the demo button and start exploring. Now let's get back to the video. So AWS has S3 buckets, which are basically storage uh, buckets, really, um, that we, we can write data to, right? And in this video, and, and what we're interested in is writing our Elasticsearch indexes to a S3 bucket. And so, for example, maybe I'm limited in resources in terms of space, uh, disk space that I can add to my server, right? Or maybe uh, within our data centers, I don't have any file sharing, a uh, network file sharing that I can take advantage of. So locally, I can't write my backups to anything that I currently have available. Or I don't want to take the time to maybe spin up a server um, that will be responsible for NFS or you know whatever the case may be there's a lot of different possibilities but what's has made AWS and other cloud providers so popular is their simplicity and ease right and we don't also we we don't have to take the time and money to stand up our own infrastructure to be able to handle something like storing backups right and with AWS they call it their S3 buckets so what we can actually do with Elasticsearch is we'll configure an S3 bucket on the AWS uh, through AWS Elastic, uh, Elasticsearch has a plugin um, that actually makes it really easy. So we'll we'll install the plugin. We'll then upload our our keys uh, to it, and we'll we'll go through that, and you'll see that process. And then we'll go ahead and register that S3 bucket as a repo for Elasticsearch, and we'll be able to then write our backups, our backup indexes to the new S3 bucket. So. Within the AWS console here, you see I'm signed in. I'll go ahead and select S3. And if you don't have that pre-populated already, you can just do the drop down and under the storage and S3, select that there. I, of course, don't have any buckets already, so I'll go ahead and create one. And I'll just give it a name. We'll say, please subscribe. Uh, region is is fine. Of course, you could you know select a better region that fits you if if need be. Um, but I'm just gonna leave it at the U.S. East region. I'm gonna go ahead and block all public access. So for security reasons, right? I don't want someone from the outside being able to read what's in my bucket. And in this case, would be uh, Elasticsearch indexes, right? And Theoretically, if someone were able to get access to my bucket, they could spin up a Elasticsearch server and restore all my backups, right? And I wouldn't want, <laughs> and it, which would result in them being able to look at all of our security log data. So I'll go ahead and leave that enabled. Um, versioning, I'll leave disabled, and encryption, I'll leave disabled for, uh, for this uh, demo. Of course, you in a production environment, you know, if you're actually, you know, because data will be uploading to AWS, uh, would it is sensitive, right? Uh, it has host names, it has you know users logging in, um, so it has sensitive data that you in a production environment you'll probably want to enable enc encryption on AWS's, and of course that may end up costing more out of your pocket uh, to do so. I don't know AWS's pricing model in terms of that, but just be cognizant of that, and I won't mess with any of the advanced settings. So we'll go ahead and create the bucket, and we can now see our bucket here. And if we click into it, we see there's nothing here yet. So what we need to do is install the S3 plugin uh, within Elasticsearch. 
and that's something that we can do here. So let me jump onto the Elasticsearch server. And okay, we're on the Elasticsearch server. So it's actually pretty easy. I just need to run a command and they issue that here. Uh, I need to actually navigate into that directory first. It should be user share Elasticsearch. Yeah, here we go. And then I have this bin directory, which has what we're calling here the Elasticsearch plugin script. And we're gonna say install repo uh, S3. So we'll go ahead and run that. All right, so they're asking, do we for sure wanna install it? We'll say yes, and it's installed. And now what we need to do is upload our key, right? So we have a default access key and we have a default secret key, and we actually need to go ahead and generate that. So within S3, right? So I'm here, I've created my bucket, uh, or sorry, within AWS, created my bucket. What I'm then gonna do is go to my profile here and I'm gonna go to my security credentials and go ahead and select that. And I'm going to select my access keys. Um, so what I'm going to do is create a new access key. And now we need to add our access key and our secret access key to Elasticsearch's uh, key store that comes pre-bundled with Elasticsearch. So, and don't worry, I will deactivate this key before I upload the video, so please don't waste your time trying to break into my AWS account. <laughs> um, so I will go ahead and copy these just off to a notepad off to the side here and get back onto our Elasticsearch server and I will call the key store. Um, so, similar to how we enabled our S3 integration, and I will call the key store with these two commands. So I'll add my access key, and then I'll add my secret key. So we will go ahead and run this guy. Elasticsearch. So go ahead and now enter the value for my access key, which will be the first guy. And I will enter the value for the secret key, which I'll call this next command, secret key, and I will enter the value for that guy. All right, and now that that's done, we then need to restart Elasticsearch. All right, so now Elasticsearch is restarted. So now we should be able to go into our snapshot and restore tab within Kibana and see our new repo. So if we go into our repos, so I, I still have my old one from the last demo, so if you haven't seen that about backing up our Elasticsearch indexes to a file system. Uh, go ahead and check that out. But in this one, we'll go into register repository and we should have our S3 one here when this loads here in a sec. And here we go. We have our AWS S3 config that we can add. So I'll just say demo S3 and we'll go ahead and say next. And now it's asking for a bucket. So what we'll do is provide our bucket that we created. Um, so if I go into S3 again, and the bucket that we created was please subscribe. So I'll go ahead and add that there. Uh, base pad, I'll just leave all this blank. But there are some similar settings you can set like we had within the file system repo, right? Um, so maybe if you want to limit network bandwidth that's going out to AWS, you can break that up into chunks. Um, you can do that with the max snapshot bytes per second and then the max restore bytes per second because now a snapshot is going to, of course, leave your internal network and make its way up into AWS's network and 
that of course requires network bandwidth um, and will require internet bandwidth as well as it's of course having to traverse the internet to get to its final destination and same with the restore feature as well um, and I won't make it a read-only repo and we can make this private because it is and I'll go ahead and register and let's see if we can verify and sure enough we're able to verify right so now we see that I am connected to our repo here so let's go ahead and give it a shot so now we can create a policy that will take advantage of the S3 repo um, so the name I'll just say demo S3 say demo S3 and now we'll select our repo we'll select our S3 one um, so go ahead and set next uh, again I just care about the wazoo alerts right so 4.x and I, I explain a little more detail about this in the snapshot and restore video uh, previously so again if you haven't seen that go ahead and check that out and I will hit next and I'll say delete after just 365 days hit next and I will create my policy so let's now uh, we can ignore that warning that's that's fine so now let's run it and what we should see is our s3 bucket start to accumulate data here in a sec so if we click into the snapshot we can get uh, we can usually get some running details of it uh, maybe that's only when you're restoring but so if we wait a sec we should see our maybe actually if we start to refresh this we should see some data start to come in and here we go so we're having our indices we have our so within the bucket please subscribe snapshot uh, elasticsearch created this indices directory and loaded our indices to it so i bet if we go back it's probably almost done looks like it's still going but it has started to create or upload sorry our indices that we want it to which is all of our wazoo alerts and it looks like there's 15 of them to upload there's 15 objects in here so that looks good so we can wait a few minutes and we will then see how we can restore and as you can see it's taking a little longer than just taking a snapshot to our local file system because it is having to traverse the internet and write to uh, AWS's infrastructure so we won't have the same throughput speeds as we would of just writing to the local file system or potentially if you have you know 10 gig capabilities within your internal networks and you're writing to a you know local nfs or something like that that is taking advantage of your 10 gig network of course that'll be faster as well but we all know how shaky the internet can be at times so <laughs> um but it, it will retry too so uh, it, it has some built-in retry attempts so you know, because the internet and the networks that make up the internet aren't always reliable all the time, because these are indexes, you want to make sure are being backed up correctly. Uh, Elasticsearch will retry automatically, and of course, if you do ever have any, if there's any elongated network failures, and for whatever reason you, the your servers can't write to the S3 bucket you'll have your failed indices that will be created here and so you could always just run a retry or um, you know do whatever troubleshooting you need to need to be done and then you know exactly which indices failed so you can just run a snapshot of those failed ones rather than doing them all over again all right so now let's go ahead and restore from these guys so i'll do the similar test um that i did in the last video so i will filter on my wazoo alerts here let's go ahead and remove all 15 of them so this would permanently delete my indexes 
uh, the data that made that resided within these indexes is now gone, um, and now all of a sudden I need to restore from a backup so I can view these logs again, right? So if we go back into our snapshot and restore, we'll collect, uh, we'll select our S3 one bucket. I'll go ahead and select restore. I'll do all data streams. Next, next, and restore. And now, so within our bucket, right, we have all of our indexes have been written, right? And now our Elasticsearch server is reaching out to our S3 bucket. It is authenticating with the access key and secret key that we provided, right, within Elasticsearch's key store. So um, that's, you know, very critical to, to make sure you get that right and or else you won't be able to access uh, your bucket. You won't be able to write or read from your S3 bucket. And of course, you definitely want to have that authentication and make the bucket private so that no one could stumble upon uh, you know, your production data and get a wealth of knowledge into you know, host name, security logs, uh, which would make up you know, users logging into your box, uh, you know, a whole wealth of information that you wouldn't want someone who shouldn't be getting their hands on it, getting their hands on it. So if we go back into our resource status, you see some of these are finished, a few more are in progress. So this is starting to look good. If we go back to our index management and we filter on Wazoo alerts, we see them starting to come in. Uh, and some of these are still in a yellow state, so they haven't finished yet, but these are looking good. And we'll wait a few minutes. Okay, and now we're all in a green state here. And now, again, just like before, it's almost, you know, now it's like my indexes were never erased in the first place, right? I have now the ability to view all the data within my indexes again. So it's like, they were never even erased. And we have so much flexibility with this snapshot and restore feature within Elasticsearch and is a feature that I really encourage everyone to use, whether you wanna use a, a local file system or a remote file share like NFS, or I really enjoy taking advantage of Amazon's S3 buckets. Um, you can lock them down very securely you have the flexibility to where, you know, say my Elasticsearch server blows up for whatever reason or servers, right? My whole cluster just bottoms out on me. Or say for in some extreme cases, I lose access to my data center where my Elasticsearch servers are residing altogether, right? Well, now what I could do is I could spin up another Elasticsearch cluster within a, a different environment, an environment I have access to, register a repo to my same S3 bucket following the same steps that we just did. And now with this brand new cluster, I could restore all of my previous logs, right? So we now have the ability to completely lose our Elasticsearch cluster, but have the ability to access our data because we have a S3 bucket set up, right? And that's done with just a few commands rather than you know, migrating from another file share or, at, you know, physically moving uh, disk drives around, right? So, of course, there's many benefits to, to the cloud and why AWS and other cloud services are so popular, but I, I really enjoy taking advantage of the S3 bucket and Elasticsearch makes it really easy to take advantage of that. So, I hope you guys learned a little bit in this video uh, please subscribe if you haven't already just like the bucket says and thank you guys for spending some time with me and i will see you in the next video